Hi, my name is Maria Kanjelska and you are watching Poland Daily Culture. We're still talking about Adam Mickiewicz examining his life when he was writing Pentadeusz, his last great epic work written and how it was presented later in film. So stay with us. Mickiewicz was eating dinners in Hotel Lambert and that's how he got involved into political actions. He was entrusted by the French government with a political mission to Constantinople, to Turkey. And that might not have been the greatest idea he got involved, but unfortunately he did. He ended up in Constantinople, so in Ottoman Empire in 1855, in the end of September. And he was accompanied by Michał Tchaikovsky and also by his friend Armand Levy, who was attempting to organize a Jewish legion in a similar fashion as Mitkiewicz wanted to organize a Polish legion there in Constantinople. And while he was visiting a military camp in Constantinople, he contracted cholera and died in the same year. Petrificus totalis. And this is, I see, a, a similarity because Mitkiewicz died for cholera. Right now we are closed in our co homes uh, because of COVID. Plagues are nothing new. Illness is nothing new. Death is nothing new. It comes to all of us. That's uh, something that we apparently have trouble accepting these days. I suppose everyone individually has trouble with it. But uh, um, to imagine it, what that means. But I want to say that, again, a parallel with Byron, because Byron also was mucking about uh, in, and died in Greece. Um, he was also rather a messianic figure. Both of them, these great poets, died in, in, in quite near each other, actually, geographically, and uh, if not for exactly the same reason and, and for similar reasons. Yeah. Yes, but though um, Tadeusz Bojzelański, one of the greatest translator of French literature to Polish, find out a uh, conception or speculated that Mickiewicz in fact was murdered or poisoned uh, because of his in political influence, but it might not have been true. Probably he really contracted cholera as many others in those times and died. He was at first buried in Constantinople, then moved to Paris, which is kind of funny because he was moved to Paris in 1855 mm -hmm and buried in Montmercy in 1861. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering what happened to his corpse during this time. Hmm. But question, if, you, if, you, if you might know that... Well, they were move, they'd always move people about. Chopin's heart was brought back to Poland, right? Yes, which is a very because interesting they were, they were story. Apart, because he yeah, was brought... Abroad. Chopin's heart was brought back to Poland by his sister right. in a train, mm -hmm. and she took it in her bag. She had it in her bag, yeah, in her like purse. That. Just like we would take maybe a, a relative's ashes in an urn today in a container or a box uh, and take them, transport them from the place well, where they were. Ashes they were, is a different thing. When you, you know, transporting your brother's heart in your purse, it's something a little bit different, I would say. I wonder, I, I wonder though, if that wasn't just uh, the equivalent of the way we, I mean, in some sense of, you could carry the heart, so I'm saying, or you maybe carry the brain if you want it to be even more. But the heart was a thing. The artist's heart needs to be buried in their in homeland. That's why we didn't leave Mickiewicz and Montmercy for, with all the others French artists. Well, that's interesting, but his brain was actually what was writing the poems. Yeah, but we... If you think about it uh, biologically. 
I'll I just throw that out there. I mean, but it's a in, kind of a superstition anyway. But yeah, in a way, of course. It's a but symbol. Also, it's a symbol when you want to visit the grave. It's a great movie scene. Just that train ride would be a great movie story, wouldn't it? Her this train, train ride. ride would and be great. And then flashbacks, <laughs> using that as the motif. And then maybe there's some agent after her trying to get the heart, you know? It turned into a little bit of a Hitchcock type film. It might be, but in 1890, uh, so Mitskevich remains where this entered and moved to Austrian Poland mm -hmm. and uh, entombed in the crypts in Krakow's Wawel Castle. It's the main, the main castle of Poland, yes. where are the, uh, with, most of the famous people are buried. With, yeah, with a lot of them anyway. A number of, of persons of great importance, out of great importance, mm -hmm. which is, in funny thing, along with Słowacki. So those two right. great Polish writers and poets who were dueling and fighting with each other ended up uh, buried one next to each other. Mm -hmm. In Babel. Well, it's ironic, isn't it? Waiting yeah. for the for Poland to gain back his independence. The phantoms of of Babel, which are later described like this by Stanisław Wyspiański. Wyspiański, I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. If you are interested in following Mickiewicz's steps, which are uh, pretty interesting because from Novogrodek mm. to Russian Empire, Moscow, St. Petersburg, through Germany, Rome, and then later Dresden, Paris, back of course to Wawel, where he is right now entombed as a symbol. Also uh, the greatest Polish literature and the symbol of Polishness, they are buried. You can, of course, visit his grave, but we more encourage you to read his literature and his poems. And uh, you can start with Pantadeusz. It is published, it is translated to English. It is easy to read for you. And there are two translations, one made by Johnson, another made by Mackenzie. In very interesting and very well made. Do it, read it. It's like Lord Byron or like Goethe. Amazing. Or watch Pantadeusz made by Vida. It's even there on YouTube. And thank you very much for watching Poland Daily Culture.